Do you remember in uh, 2015 when Joe Hockey, then Treasurer, said if you want to buy a home, all you need to do is get a good job? The starting point for a first home buyer is to get a good job that pays good money. If housing were unaffordable in Sydney, no one would be buying it. Get a good job that pays good money. Simples. Are you trying to get a job in regional Victoria? And what sort of response have you been getting? New figures reveal that for each job on offer in regional Victoria, there are 30 applicants. So it's not that you're not trying. It's not that you're a dud. It's the math. 30 into one doesn't go. The federal opposition is now warning that regional Australia will be hardest hit when the job seeker payment is wound back because job vacancy figures show clearly that it is twice as hard to get a job outside a capital city. In fact, the Australian reports that regional towns are bleeding jobs and are suffering from the biggest employment losses in the country. Jessica Harrison is aged 65 and lives in Wonthaggy, where 1,800 people are on JobSeeker or the Youth Allowance, and she has been on New Start or JobSeeker for 10 years. Jessica Harrison, good afternoon. Hi, thanks for having me. Is it easy to get a job in your neck of the woods? No, it's not. I mean, I feel for the younger ones as well. Um, But we're a daring area. There are people who have to milk twice a day and I've heard them being hassled at the job agencies because they've been told, oh, you need more work to actually come, you know, to to come to fit with what we want you to do. So it's a big problem. People shouldn't be hassled for not being able to get jobs when the jobs aren't there. What has the most confronting thing been for you as you seek work? Oh, well, I suppose just just that rejection letter, really. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that being 65, I'm not really in the sort of the high market for getting a job. But at the same time, you do sort of have hopes when you put your application in. You know, you're sort of you're waiting a little bit on tender hooks, hoping you'll get an interview. But yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really happen. What does the letter say? Oh, it just says thank you for your application, <laughs> and uh, um, yes, I'm afraid you're unsuccessful. Yes. Um, Yeah, and I think this sort of situation that you've just outlined is going to lead to depression. It's also going to lead to anger in families. And unfortunately, a lot of the anger ends up being directed at women. So there's going to be domestic violence as a result of of the problems, the economic problems that people are facing. And people are going to be down at the food banks. Mm. What sort of jobs have you tried to apply for? Oh, well, I've applied for things like receptionist at the, and then uh, quite a number of receptionist jobs, um, for example, at the health centres and the, um, you know, just through in the town. Then I've applied for lo- the local library. Then I've applied for um, jobs where I've got a, I would have to sort of relocate for the weekend. For example, as a park ranger down at Wilson's Prom, I've applied for them. When, when the um, Andrews government put a bit of money into sort of seasonal park rangers, Um, And then at the moment I've been able to get some part-time cleaning work, but that's, yeah, that's that's limited really. What is your reaction at today's job vacancy figures, which shows for every one job in regional Victoria there are 30 applicants? Well, it's it's no surprise because you talk to people around the ta- around my town, and we know that there aren't many jobs. And even, of course, the the um, catering um, side of things is severely cut back. Um, so that the big people sitting at home just really wondering how they're going to um, pay their bills, and something has to go when you've got bills coming up, and it often is food. What do you mean often is um, food? What people, it's probably, people are... That's what you have to cut back on, really, buying food, because if you've got other bills coming in, electricity, um, other utilities, rates, rent, you know, that's that's the thing that people cut, have been for years cutting back on when they were on that low rate of new start. When the um, coronavirus supplement came in, that helped a lot of people. And, of course, now, as we know, in a couple of weeks, it's been cut back $300 a fortnight. So... People are going to be missing out. And now people can get, they can afford to get their medications, the older people, and some people are able to, you know, do special things like go to the dentist. <laughs> but that's special all going to... Um, yes, that's right. Um, so, 
you know, I think I, I really hope that people just start helping each other out a lot more in towns and talking about what we're going through rather than, you know, being embarrassed and trying to keep it quiet. And I really think that the whole system of punishing the unemployed by making people apply for jobs that um, there in a lot of cases will be finished, and that's to do with the job agencies, which actually you know, require you to apply for a set number of jobs under pain of getting your benefits cut. How does how does it make you feel to know that you have to apply for, how many jobs is it every month? It depends on your circumstances because they do take into account the fact that we are in the areas of a high unemployment, but it depends on your individual contract. Um, it makes people feel <laughs> quite demoralised when they're applying for jobs that they've got no hope of getting we also get people being told they've got to do courses when it then they might it might be for you know learning computers for example when they've got no aptitude for that so people need to people do need training and i think probably um, a whole lot of TAFE courses which could people might be able to go to for free which could be put on offer that might really help people feel less demoralized have you had to go without food well, basically, put it that way, I'm just very careful with my budget, you know, and just one extra bill can end up with me down at the food bank. And that's where you can get food for free, Jessica? That's right, yes. Did you ever anticipate that you would find yourself in this position? Ah, uh, Well, no, you don't, you don't really expect it. I mean, I'm really grateful for the benefits that exist and I'm grateful to have a roof over my head. I know that there but for fortune I might be sleeping in a car like a lot of people are. So uh, I'm grateful for what I've got but of course it, you know, it can get you down. Good luck. Thank you. Jessica Harrison, uh, 65 year old from Wonthaggy who has been on Newstart for over 10 years. New job vacancy figures out today show that for every one job that there is in regional Victoria, there are 30 applicants. So she says it's demoralising when you get the letter telling you that you're not getting that job. But those numbers explain why, don't they, in uh, 29 out of those 30 occasions. 1300 303 468. Have you been trying to get a job in regional Victoria? We requested an interview with the Minister for Small Business and Jobs, Macalia Cash, who did not return our calls. Uh, Linda Burney is the Shadow Social Services Minister. Linda Burney, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your response to these numbers? Well, I just want to say that Jessica sounds extraordinary. And uh, what she's saying completely encapsulates what's going on for people in regional areas in Australia. Uh, the numbers of unemployed people uh, compared to the jobs available are just shocking. I mean, it's bad enough in regional Victoria, but if you go to Tasmania or to the Northern Ter Territory, you're talking about 59, 69%. Um, and the rhetoric of Michael McCormack is just laughable. He's saying, come to the regions, there's plenty of jobs, you know, you'll have no trouble. Well, what Jessica just said completely blew that out of the water. And it is very difficult at the moment. We know the unemployment queues uh, are going to get longer. We also hear from pockets of regional Victoria, though, that they can't get workers, uh, that uh, in uh, fruit-picking fruit regions, uh, for instance, it's difficult to get workers, that in agricultural regions it can be difficult to get pickers, that some farmers who are seeking assistance mm. with their farms also struggle to attract uh, uh, employees. So while the broader picture is dire... Um, there are pockets of of employment that are clearly not being taken up. Well, obviously those areas have been reliant on seasonal work. It just seems to me that the um, agency responsible for employment needs to be thinking more laterally about filling those positions um, and supporting people to go to regional areas. Um, is it is just inconceivable to me that in some parts of this country uh, there is the view that there's plenty of work in regional areas 
but there actually isn't. So it's, it's very patchy, which is what you're pointing out. Um, but there needs to be a much more nuanced approach by uh, the employment services to the ways in which you fill those holes. I mean, it is just inconceivable, as I said to me, that we are looking at the situation where in regional states it's much harder to get a job than it is in the areas. And unfortunately, the rhetoric of the government does not um, bear that out. Well, the government say that they've created a million jobs. Well, um, they haven't. <laughs> and um, it, the, the statistics don't lie. I mean, what I've got in front of me is not only an outlay of how many regional positions there are available across the country, but also the age, um, the age that ages that are being affected the most. And what what my information tells me, and it is good information, is that young people are suffering incredibly badly in terms of being able to get employment, particularly ages between 24 and 44. Sure, but every government does this, don't they? Uh, Every government leaves the regions behind. Every government spends its cash on the capital cities, the glowing jewel and the crown, and that third of the country which lives in uh, the regions is left behind. Of course, there are there's there's 30 applications for every one job because that's the story of the way governments regard regional Australia. An afterthought. But, but it, should, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be like that. I mean, it is... but your government, your government, when in office, 